Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Um, it's my first time in Pasteur Institute. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I'll, I'll give four lectures. And roughly speaking, there will be uh, two independent parts. So today is two lectures. And uh, it will focus on mostly uh, Fukai categories of punctured surfaces. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, this is some topic that I've worked on for many years now, and uh, uh, we have some recent uh, results, and I'll try to explain these results. And uh, this the second part, which will be on Thursday, uh, will be about uh, Fukai categories of higher dimensional uh, synthetic manifolds, and these uh, uh, kind of there is a. Certain examples that I studied uh, recently, which uh, touches on uh, per project algebras and causality, so that that's going to be the uh, second part. Okay, so uh, let me start uh, with uh, today's uh, topic, and uh, here's the here's the theorem that I want to get to. So. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Sasha Polish. Okay, and uh, so the, the result uh, that we proved is as follows. So, so first uh, there is a, a symplectic surface, so this is a non-compact, so G gives G surface with uh, M number of punctures, so, and M is non-zero. So that's an uh, important uh, restriction. But it is uh, other than that, there is no other restriction. So G is any G genus G. So it's post non zero, non negative. And M is uh, non negative. Okay. And uh, on the, so this is a, so, uh, so, so this is going to be a symplectic here. Uh, so kind of just give it, give it an area form. Uh, so there's not any synthetic forms in, in this dimension. And uh, there, there will be so uh, there will be two uh, categories that are uh, associated to this. Uh, so one of them is uh, is uh, is how called the Fukai, compact Fukai category. So this will have objects which are uh, so they even though the surface is non-compact, the objects that go into this are compact. Okay, so I'll explain more precisely what they are. And uh, there will be a wrapped Fukai category. And uh, this, uh, this is an extended version of it, uh, referring to the last uh, talk. Uh, so this, this has compact objects, but it has also non-compact objects in it. So, there is a full and faithful embedding from the first one to the second one. Okay, and um, on the other side, so on the algebraic geometric side, we'll, we'll have a curve. Uh, we'll have it, um, a one-dimensional curve, but it has a, a, it's, a, it's a curve in a, in a somewhat generalized sense. So that these are. This, each component is an uh, is an orbifold P1 with two orbi two orbi points. So each of these are P1 uh, a k a k plus one. Uh, let me just stick to this location. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. So um, so this is an orbifold P1. It's uh, obtained by gluing together two uh, uh, um, two finite quotients of C along the C, along C star. And uh, so, so I kind of picture it like this. Uh, um, uh, we, we call the balloon following the, the previous work of Sibir from Razasco. So there is this uh, all four points. Um, and 
So there's uh, these integers that are a k at each vertex. Let me try to write a bit bigger. Sorry, yeah, of course. A k, a k plus a, a k minus dot dot dot. So there are, if there are n components, there are n integers like this. Okay. Um, but there is there, there, there's, there's another set of integers, which is uh, how I identify these, uh, which comes when I uh, try to identify these, uh, these nodes. So, um, so at the node, so let's, let's look at the neighborhood of node. Okay. So this is x, y equals 0 modulo uh, uh, finite group of order a, k. Okay. But uh, I have a choice in how this finite group acts. So um, if psi is a AK, AK root of unity, okay, um, yeah, so this is why I want to stick to this. Sorry, so I'll, I'll just change these A's to R's. I'm sorry. Just because I'm going to write formula later on. Okay. I apologize. Um, and uh, the, the way Xi acts is uh, Xi uh, acts on x, x comma y by Xi uh, x and Xi to k, uh, so Xi to l, y. But l is something, uh, l is uh, something relatively prime to rk. So, if you wanted to preserve this uh, x, y, x to 0, then you would act uh, by x, psi x and psi minus 1 y. But uh, I don't necessarily need to have this function preserved. All I need is the 0 set of it preserved. So there is an extra integer that, that comes there. Okay, so L. Okay. So these are the, our curves. I know this is the same as the function. Sorry? L is the same also time? No, L depends on K as well, so there's going to be L K for each, sorry. For each uh, uh, node, there's going to be an extra integer called L. So let's call this L K. Thank you. Okay. So that's uh, kind of a, a generality where we we can obtain a curve where we uh, glue these nodes together. So, so let's call this a uh, uh, curve C, uh, R, and L. Okay. So R is a tuple of uh, n tuple. So there's an n component. Maybe n is also n component. Okay. Uh, there's uh, an n tuple of R and n tuple of L. Okay. And so we have a curve like this. Okay? Sorry, this n is not the same n, so let's put that n. Is there a relation between n and n? So, sorry, I can't hear you. Do you fix a relation between n and n? Is it determined? Right, so, so I was about to state, so I, I, I'm going to say there is a function that sends this RL to GN, okay? Such that the following is true. So, and I. I, I'll write, so that's why I'm holding this paper here. I, I, I can't remember this function. So, this, this function. so, so there's this C L C R L, and uh, so the, to C R L, I'll associate two categories. So these are perfect complexes and Yudico of C R L. Okay, and the statement is. There is a function that sends RL to GN such that these are equinoses. Okay, so let me try to write that function now. So and I'm, I'm not a big fan of this function, it's just some function. So so what is this function? Um, so let's define. So usually I just omit this function from a talk, but 
since I have time now, I can I can try to write it up. So let's let's uh, define this uh, pi by dcd of these numbers and di by ri over pi. Okay, and then g is the uh, 1 plus 1 over 2 sum i from 1 to n, ri m, ri minus pi, okay? And uh, d, d, sorry, d, m, m is equal to um, um, P, it's the sum of PIs, so P1 plus P2. Okay, hopefully that's correct. So it's some, some function, and the correct version is in the paper if you want to see. This is incorrect. Okay. So, but uh, here's the important property of this function. So there's this function. So this function is surjective. Okay, so this is a surjective function. To the set that, that to the set that I, I consider where n is not equal to zero and g can be anything. Okay, so in other words, in other words, for any genus g surface with n punctures, we have a mirror. Okay, so it's surjective. And it's some curve. And it's and it's not injective. So in other words, uh, for any genus T with time functors, there are many pairs. Okay? So there's uh, multiple curves that give the same category. So and I'll ex I'll try to explain why why. Okay, so this is kind of part of the talk. I don't explain this. So is the PD for always homologically smooth? That's right. Yeah. And W is also. I mean that's why you asked. <laughs> And uh, uh, the notion of homological smooth will come up uh, soon, and uh, it's actually it was, uh, important in the, in the way we put this. Okay. Can you clarify this? Uh, you call what you call the form of P1. You, you just mean that there are singularities there that, that look like the ADE singularities, or do you really mean that you have some it, to keep the Q in the form? I, I just tr treat it as a stack. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. finite quotient okay. by a cyclic group. So that enters the definition of perf. Sorry. That enters the definition of perf in DB code. Yeah. Kind of yeah, but uh, um, so that will also be relevant for why this is not injective. So you may, a, if you if you're uh, impatient, the the correct word is Mackay corresponds, but. Uh, but I'll try to explain it. Okay, so that's the statement, and uh, so we have to understand how to work with these these guys. Um, but uh, um, right, so there are two things. So there is one thing that I omitted, which is important, and uh, and I also this is not. You, I haven't uh, told you how, how, how these categories are defined. But so, one uh, extra data for the A side, so for the symplectic side, that is important. Okay. Uh, so it's not just, it's not enough to give a symplectic manifold. Okay, so uh, I have to give a grading structure on this symplectic manifold in order to talk about Z-graded categories, or Z-grade, I mean neuron. So, Z-grade categories. Okay, so, um, so the right-hand side is uh, Z-graded, but the left-hand side uh, um, is, uh, uh, without, uh, without specifying external data, it's not Z-graded. So this extra data is a line field. So this is a... Uh, um, what is this? This is a section of the projectilized tangent model of sigma. Um, but 
Okay, so so it's a, it's slightly more general than a non-vanishing vector field. Okay, so it's a it's a hollow line field. And and really, I should uh, talk about these guys because these change the gradient on the so for each choice of line field. So maybe maybe let me say this. So. Uh, line fields up to homotopy, that's what I'm considering. And uh, this, uh, the set of line fields, of line fields, is uh, H1 sigma torsion. <coughs> so, so for each uh, uh, one of these, uh, I have a category that's Z graded. Z -graded. And uh, uh, they are drastically different. Okay, so if I choose a different line field, uh, they're not going to be uh, usually equivalent, and they will have different behaviors. So, so it's important to choose, uh, so in order to state this, it's important to specify this line field. And, and what, I'm, what I have in mind is there exists a, a canonical line, well, not canonical, but a choice of a line field that makes this equivalence true. So if you're uh, into proving near symmetry for punctured surfaces, there is still more. So there are still other line fields uh, for which uh, you could try to prove near symmetry. And so let's uh, let's uh, give you one 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 simplest example. So here is uh, T star S one. So this is a, a simplest kind of a left hand side. Okay, and uh, we will see, so this is an analyst, we will see that, so as I said, there are integerly many H1 of uh, word of uh, line fields here, and we will see that uh, this category, the wrapped category, uh, is equivalent to uh, whichever field we are working over is uh, uh, perfect modules over, over this. Okay, and uh, but line field enters. So this is the Lorentz polynomial, and the line field enters uh, by giving the gradient of this uh, this variable. Okay, and the standard one that people usually talk about when when you, when you ask uh, someone what's the mirror of T star S one, they are very quick to say C star, right? So that's that's for the standard one where the, the gradient of this is zero. And uh, and in that case, uh, there is a, for example, this is an object of the category, which corresponds to points in the mirror. But if you change the grading, this this uh, Lagrangian no longer is an object. So you lose lots of lots of objects if you change uh, the grading here. So it's they are very different categories. So it's very important to distinguish. These. Okay. All right. So this is kind of uh, this external line field. Uh, and you'll try to understand how it comes about when I give a definition. Which one action is it like a sort of damp twist? Of Sorry, the, I couldn't hear. So the H1 uh, torso structure, is it a sort of damp twist of the one? Uh, no, it's a. Uh, so. Um, so line field is so line field is just a kind of a vector field, right? Mm -hmm. It's unoriented, uh, so it's a section of the standard model, and you can twist uh, that by uh, 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 adding the cohomology class by, by taking a pullback. So so maybe 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 it's, it's here is a way to see this. So eta is a section of this, right? So it gives you a cohomology class. In H two of uh, um, the project-wise tangent bundle, so H two of project-wise tangent bundle relative to its boundary. Okay? Just because it's a section, just take the full image of it. Okay, and then uh, you can uh, do Quarkard rule. So it's, a, it's a H one uh, in here, right? It's, a, it is, it's almost all, all of this cohomology, except it has to intersect the fiber ones, so that's, that's a condition. But other than that, it's a, these are, these, these, this set of line fields, optimal is the same as cohomology classes of H, relative to H2 that intersects the fiber ones. 
And if you have a common deposit in a tougher one, you can pull it back and add to this guy. Okay. So it's a so no no this here, it's just a cohomological. Okay, so um, right. So let's uh, let's try to understand these categories. So what are these? Okay. So, so here is a kind of a, a cartoon review of categories that you usually see. So it, it has to be done. So, so M is a review manifold. So what's the review manifold? Um, it's a it's an open symplectic manifold for which we can control holomorphic curvature. Okay, so, so here is a, a formal definition. So it's a symplectic manifold. There is only that symplectic form. So this is a non-degenerate closed two form. Okay, but we require uh, omega to be exact. So there is a primitive. So it's exact. And uh, we require M uh, to be of the form M compact part union the boundary uh, of this compact part times a uh, sorry, times a positive real line. So this is kind of a cylindrical end. Okay, and uh, we require uh, a legal vector field. So this is a this is a vector field that points outwards along the partial the boundary, and uh, it's uh, it expands the symplectic form. So it's this is the same thing as saying that the lead derivative of omega with respect to x is omega. Okay. So this is a convexity condition. So uh, I I tend to draw it like this. Okay, so there is a symplectic form which is a compact part here, and then there is a uh, boundary, and here we have a vector field that expands everything. Okay. And the, the reason for this is, I mean, this is fairly technical. I just uh, want to get it up on the board. Uh, the reason is uh, we want uh, so we will count moduli space of holomorphic curves, and these holomorphic curves we. Uh, if you don't have a convex boundary, they can just uh, escape to infinity. Okay, so you will lose compactness of the moduli space, so you can't count it anymore. Okay, so this is a this is a kind of a this is one uh, con convenient way of ensuring that uh, moduli space of holomorphic curves is compact. Okay, so so that by by the application of maximum okay, So of course none of this is needed for. Uh, surfaces you can prove compactness easily by just topology. But uh, uh, so I'm trying to sketch a general definition. Okay, and uh, so uh, uh, so so maybe as I remarked there, so there it's not enough to just have a symplectic manifold if you want a Z graded category. You should also have a, a some kind of an uh, extra structure that gives you grading, and that's ensured by the requirement that two C1 of M is equal to zero. So this is for. So it's, uh, you, you can. It, this is a. Uh, if you don't have this, then you don't have Z frame. And and uh, to get the Z frame, you have to trivialize uh, the second power of the canonical bond by choosing the trivialization. So for each choice of trivialization, you have a great category. And there we implement this uh, kind of very uh, hands-on way, just by choosing the line field. Okay? 
So now, now we can talk about objects. So the objects are the largest. So let's 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 focus on F. Okay. So objects are not F. Objects of this. Uh, so these are uh, compact, exact, and graded Lagrangians. Lagrangian sum manifolds. Okay. Lagrangian sum manifold means it's a half dimension manifold where all the dimensions are part of it. Exact means the restriction of theta is exact, right? So exact is. And graded uh, is. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll make it more precise in the case of surfaces. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a vanishing of some line like this. So it's a you know, topological condition. Okay, so these are L. Uh, we admit uh, as many of these L as we can. So this is a kind of a, uh, not completely clear at the moment, I think. So in the case of surfaces, for example, one allows uh, immersed Lagrangians. So it doesn't have to be embedded with the ideas. And uh, we can do flirting for those ones. In higher dimensions, one can still try to embed uh, uh, a lot of inverse like ideas. But it's not clear these are all. Okay. And uh, the, the way uh, we deal with it is we, we take a So even though we want this to be a triangulated category, okay, um, or a pre-triangulated category, um, it might be it might be that uh, so and, and we want each object to be ge geometrically represented by Lagrangian, um, and that's the case for surfaces. But in, in higher dimensions, it's not obvious that inverse Lagrangian is enough for this purpose. So what you do is you you, you put in as much as you can, and then you you take the triangulated closure by algebraic operation. Okay, so but. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful thing that I expect to be true that the, all objects here are geometric. Okay, and that's, that's a, a beautiful result of Heidel, Konsevich, Katsakov in the case of the surface. Okay, so, so these are the uh, Lagrangian sub uh, somewhat maybe somewhat extended uh, notion of sub manifold. And morphisms. Are uh, given by intersections. Of, so, so you fix a you fix a ground field K, fix a ground field K. So maybe I should say this is a K linear category, uh, K linear infinity category, um, and uh, hopefully it's pre-triangulated. But if not, we make it triangulated. Um, and the morphisms between the gradients L1 and L2 are given by um, the intersection points. But maybe, maybe you have to uh, sorry, put that. And I put the prime there because maybe if it's not a trap, if they don't intersect transversely, you perturb one of them by a homotopy isotopy. Okay, so, that, so, so as to make them transverse. And uh, the, the category depends on these choices of making things transverse. But on the, on the other hand, uh, the, the homotopy type of this category does not. Okay, so. And, okay, so, so, so far these are just uh, uh, morphisms, but the interest, interesting thing comes when we uh, try to compute, uh, so try to define operations. So the aim of the structure. Uh, let's let's put it all there. Oops. No, they, they may not, but uh, I can perturb them using a Hamiltonian isotopy. So using the flow of a Hamiltonian vector field. And uh, there are different setups when you don't have to perturb, but uh, it's convenient to use the setup uh, using Hamiltonian 
perturbations because in that case uh, there is a whole book of uh, Paul's idol which uh, does this completely rigorously, and uh, it's, it's kind of a reference book for for this. Um, okay, so now yeah. The road of the X, I didn't Where is X? Oh, so X is this little vector field, okay? And if you give me one of those X's, I can prove that holomorphic curves do not escape to infinity. The, uh, the holomorphic curves that I'm going to just talk about, okay? So, so that that moduli space is compact. So, so it's it's kind of a um, it's an auxiliary thing that allows me to prove. Existence of it allows me to prove that moduli space of uh, holomorphic distance is a uh, well uh, defined compact thing so that I can count. Otherwise, you're saying the definition of the category doesn't depend on It doesn't depend on that, no. So let's, uh, let's write this. Sorry, I wrote more, but maybe to keep up with tradition, let's call it CF for flirting complex. And uh, uh, let's try to define these A infinity operations that I'm talking about. So these are uh, operations for each k. Okay. And they, they are, uh, so somehow we write these things from right to left. Okay. We were taught that way. So, okay, so this is a, a this has a k input and one output. Okay, so this is a k, it's a k of your map. And it counts uh, uh, holomorphic uh, uh, polygons, which are k plus one zones. Okay, so k plus one zones. So it's too small. Okay. And uh, the, this, this is a, what I'm drawing here, here is an image of a holomorphic map from the unit disk to M. Okay. And then the unit disk, may, maybe I'll draw the unit disk as well. So, so there's a unit disk, and this is a holomorphic structure, and it has the k standard points in the k, sorry, k plus 1 standard points in the k plus 1 roots of unity. So there is a fixed uh, holomorphic structure here, and we just map this to the to, to M. So here, this is M, okay, and uh, and then the boundary conditions uh, are given as labeled. So this is a this is a map with with which is required that uh, on each uh, side it lies on the Lagrangian submanifold, and on these corners there is a convergence. To intersection points. Okay, so this is a. The, so let's let's label this uh, x. Uh, uh, let's call this x1, x2. So let, let, let me assume that I fixed uh, some intersection points, and let me assume that all of them are already in transverse position. And so the the coefficient. The coefficient of. The, uh, is x naught after I apply this operation is the count of these disks. It's moduli space of disks. And uh, by the compactness properties, we know that this count is finite. So there's, we are going to count rigid ones. So they, they, there might be higher dimensional moduli spaces, but the rigid ones are are, are finite. So they just go moduli space of k rigid k plus one nodes, and uh, it gives me a number, and that number I put it in front of this coefficient. Okay. So so I'll I'll give you some example. This, this is really, really uh, uh, I don't know how uh, scary that you see these things, but. In, in the case of surfaces, we can really count these guys. So, and in other cases as well. So, uh, over the past few years, we, maybe 10 years, we have developed techniques to count these guys. So, we can, we can actually get numbers out of these. 
And uh, so, um, and maybe one of the important properties of, of this map is that we have the infinite relations in this map. So what is uh, this sketch equation mean? So we we fix the number of inputs, okay? Some number of inputs, and so any in, in the middle we, I can apply any of these mu j operations. So contract those, and then I, I can output and the remaining inputs, and I, I apply the mu i operation to that, and I sum all possible ways I can do this. And that's an infinity equation. That's uh, if that's zero, then we have an infinity output. Okay. Um, it's a, it might be uh, if you've never seen this, it might be I, I don't know it might be a bit too mysterious looking. But one way to think about it is uh, um, given these kind of operations, you can construct a bar complex on this algebra, and then this is the d squared equals to zero uh, relation on that bar complex. So, and this is uh, given to us by symplectic geometry. Okay, so this, the fact that these counts, so it's hard to find these infinity algebras. It's hard to find a differential which squares to zero. Okay, and, <coughs> but but given uh, a symplectic manifold with Lagrangians and uh, this kind of geometric setup, it's always true. At least in the, in, this, in the setup that I'm talking about, it's always true that this this equation holds. So we get these infinity uh, algebras out of symplectic manifolds or infinite categories. Okay, so maybe I've prepared one example, so maybe I can show you that example. Okay, so. My favorite uh, example of the symplectic manifold is one spawn two torus. So this is uh, this is the first Fukai category I ever understood in my life. So so it is uh, it's drawn. I draw it this way. So so the left and right is identified. The top and bottom is identified. Okay, and the whole is this union of all these four. Uh, quad one quarter of a circle. Okay, so, and the symplectic uh, uh, form is just what you see, it's the area of this, uh, this region. Okay, and the line field is the line field that's flat on this, so it's just a, it doesn't vary anywhere, it's just flat. Okay, so that's the choice that I get. Now, there's going to be there's going to be two Lagrangians that I'm going to draw here. So these are, uh, so since we are currently talking about f of m, which I told you are compact Lagrangians. Okay, so there are two Lagrangians here. So one of them is this one, the other one is this one. So I orient them. Maybe I forgot to say they they be oriented. Uh, okay, so now what are what is the so let's call these. Uh, so this is L zero and this is L infinity. Okay, so these are zero slope and infinity slope. So these are two objects, two Lagrangians, and uh, uh, I claim here is the. Um, so so first of all, um, I, I'm trying to now I'm trying to give you the endomorphism algebra of this uh, the union the, the sum of these objects. But remember, this is an infinity algebra. Okay, so there is a. Uh, so first, I'll give you the cohomology of this. Okay, so it will be just an associative logic. 
gradient position of the ball. Okay? Um, so, all right. So, this is going to be a quiver. So, maybe it's better to act like this. Um, and there is uh, two generators like this, E0 and E1. And this a subscript in indicates gradient. Okay. So, A is some in a crowd of representation here, so probably I'm writing this in a primitive way. But so here's how I'm going to write. Um, so so E0 and F0 are, are, are orthogonal eigenprotons. And and E1 and V0 are S here. And uh, we have the relations uh, mu2 of U1, V0 is equal to E1. And mu2 of V0, E1 is equal to minus F1. Okay? So this is the this I claim is the cohomology of this algebra. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's see one of these products. So I think uh, I have prepared for this one. Okay. So here's what we do. So first of all, uh, so what is uh, what am I trying to compute? So let's write it in that form. So CF. Uh, so V naught is from. Uh, sorry, which one was this? This is L zero. V naught is from L zero to L infinity. This is tensor. Uh, this is L infinity to L infinity prime. Uh, sorry, L infinity to L zero prime. Sorry, what? Okay, sorry. All right. L infinity to. Right, okay. Seems like I made a mistake in my progression, so I'll have to put it. Okay, so L infinity to L zero prime, and this goes to C L zero L zero. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what this means. What did I do? First of all, I'm trying to compute. Sorry. I, <laughs> so what should I do? You can you can see this. Okay. Then let's, let's, is this okay? Okay. So I'll write it in order. So here's v naught and u one, and this is going to go to e one. Okay. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to verify. This mu two of this thing is this. Okay. And why do I? So L0, L0, V0 is okay. And here, I, I put a prime here because I need two copies of L0 to talk about this E1. Okay, so E1 is a self anamorphism of L0, right? So E1 is here. It's the product, it's, uh, so the E1 is here and F1 is here. And maybe it's redundant to write that. But. So, okay, so let's try to do this. Uh, let's see if I can do it. So, here is a Hamiltonian isotopy of uh, um, L0. Okay, so this is an L0 prime. L0. So, does the subscript uh, represent a uh, cohomology to a degree? Yes. So, so this, this is degree 0, this is degree 1, this is degree 1. But uh, uh, I'm just saying, uh, so. so so currently, I'm just happy just to, if I can show you the, the triangle that contributes to this. So, right, so what is a, uh, uh, where is this triangle? Okay, so it has to be a triangle map, mapping like this, right? So it should be L0 here, L infinity here, this should be V0, and this should be L0 prime, and this should be uh, U1. And uh, this should be the E1. Okay, so can you locate such a thing? I can locate one. Can you locate? No? Come on. It's okay. It would be easier if we can see the triangle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm asking for you. <laughs> of the one in the middle. And, and no, it's not good, right? It's not good. The right. Okay, great. So some people thought it, right? 
Celsius. Yeah, this is correct. So L zero, L infinity, L zero prime, right? And then L zero. The order is important. The order is very important in this business. So this is the triangle and and I leave you as an exercise to check that there is no more triangle that satisfies this one of the conditions. So you can easily believe me. Okay, so let's do one more one more example and maybe I'll stop doing this stuff. So um, so we got mutus, but but I claim and it's maybe one of the interesting results about this, this particular configuration of Lagrangians is that there is a non-trivial mu tree here. Okay? So that's the non-trivial mu tree. So I think the following three equations are true. Mu tree u1, v0, e1 is equal to e1. Mu tree v0. V1 F1 is equal to minus F1 and then U3 V1 V0 V1 is equal to V1. Okay. And um, it's a theorem that there is no further products in this case, no higher products other than these. Okay. And so let's try to see one of these. Uh, so one of them is simple, so may maybe let's, two, let's see two of them. So this one is very simple to see. Okay, this one is the, um, so here is a picture of it. Um, so here is uh, L infinity, and here is a Hamiltonian isotopy of it. Here is L zero, and sorry, I haven't put L zero here. L zero, and here is a Hamiltonian isotopy of it. L zero prime, L zero. L of the L of the okay. And there is this one. Come on, I need more time. Quick. <laughs> there is this one. So this is a, these are all alternating intersections of L0 and L of the okay. So what does it do? Uh, L infinity becomes first L infinity, right? So it goes from L infinity to L0. And then L infinity prime and L zero prime. Right? It's a rectangle that has a map there. There's obvious rectangle here, right? So this this one. So this is easy. Uh, you would be uh, you would be uh, kind of uh, uh, misled if you think that this is the only one, because if you try to check the infinity relations, you'll see that it doesn't it's not satisfied if you just have this one. Okay, there is two more. And those are, those are, so here's one that you can draw to see. Okay. All right, so let's see. This is L infinity, these are L0, L0 prime, and L0 prime. Okay, so in order to see what this one, I have perturbed even more. So this is a, now, uh, uh, hopefully I got this right. So it's this one. Okay, so this, this is supposed to be U1, you know, E1, and E1. So how do you know when you are done? What? How do you know when you are done? How do I know when you are done? Yeah, great. Yeah, so so that's what well, that's my punchline. <laughs> I don't, right? So so <laughs> yeah, you have to take many 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 perturbations and then see that uh, uh, you're done, right? So therefore uh, the the formation theory comes in. So so this is kind of uh, kind of playing with it and uh, trying to see. Uh, um, Try to identify some of them, but uh, it's not going uh, to. In, in principle, you're supposed to compute infinitely many products. 
For for a particular UK particular bar, uh, particular uh, uh, corners, there is a finite count. Yeah. Yeah. You just look at the picture and try to identify it, and hopefully you're in a great concentration that you don't make a mistake. Right? So, but uh, at some point you have to prove that you are done. Yeah. And uh, the way that works is so I'm not going to get into that. So there is. Uh, uh, so, by the way, this is a work that I, I, I worked with Tim Perus, so there's, there are a couple of papers on this, if you want to see this kind of stuff. Um, so that was like uh, in 2011, some, somewhere around there. Uh, so what, what you do is, you, so you, you, after you identified some products and, co get, and you're convinced that this is it, then you, you use Hochschild cohomology to show that there are no further perturbations. Okay, so the higher, higher and higher uh, uh, products are fit into some uh, uh, deformation theory, and you need to say that there is no further deformations, and so they're done. Okay, so that's a that's a that's a tool that we use a lot. But I want to just show you uh, that in certain examples we actually can compute this. Uh, by this explicit class. Okay. All right. So uh, let's. Uh, so that's it for uh, compact category. So let's uh, go to the next stage. Um, and okay. So maybe maybe the mistake this theorem is kind of, kind of a surprising theorem that we proved. So this is this, these authors um, that this this infinity algebra that I wrote this A is is not formal. Okay, this is not formal. So, so in other words, uh, it's not quasi-isomorphic to its cohomology. So these high products are uh, there for a good reason. Okay. So and it's kind of surprising if you think naively because this is uh, we are just talking about two Lagrangians in this simplest possible manifold where two, two of them intersect at one point. Okay. And if you didn't uh, apply the perturbations, you wouldn't be able to see these products. If, if you just looked at these, uh, the ground as, 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 as they are, you, you would say that is, all the products are constant. Okay? And that would be the wrong answer. Okay? So these, these uh, higher products come in after you perturb. So, and, and they're essential. You can't forget them. You forget them, and you get the wrong answer. OK. So, The light field is the flat one. Sorry? That's a gradient on this algebra? Yeah, so which are uh, denoted by the subscripts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe, yeah, the, could you comment, please? So why you get this asymmetry? So Lagrangians of zero and one infinity are symmetrical. But the algebra is not. They are not symmetric. They are orientations. There is orientation. Right? So L0 intersects L infinity. Uh, Positively, but I don't think there's like a zero negatively. Okay. Okay. And uh, by the way, a hint to for the future is this, these objects are mirror to O and O, the structure shape and the skyscraper at the, at the point of, of the nodal okay. So wait, uh, what was the, I was going to use this one. Alright. Um. So is there a secret pairing in this category? What's that? Oh, is there a secret pairing in this category? There is. Yeah. This is a compact category, so there is a secret pairing. But uh, the, the algebra that I wrote, the, the representative that I wrote, is not the secret pairing. But anyway, so maybe I can talk to you about it later. So that's, that's more advanced. So is there implicit pairing in these are generators, yeah. Yeah, so these are generators of the compact category. That's right. So um, you guys are so excited about this. <laughs> Just let me let me present. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, 
right? So now I want to go to uh, uh, so you are doing this prior category, we have this compact advantages, and somehow I would say we encountered this unpleasant situation where even though these two Lagrangians were simple, their anamorphism algebra was not simple. It was uh, it had it had massy products, but so somehow it was not easy to deal with. Okay. Uh, so so and this is a somehow a, um, there is a there is a better way to deal with this compact category by embedding it into wrapped category. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, maybe this is the time to introduce. Me. So I will also introduce a partially wrapped category. So let me let me explain this sequence here. Okay, so. So this is kind of a compact Lagrangian. We kind of saw some examples, and uh, this is a, a bit new. So, so this is a, this is this extra uh, data of lambda, which is a Legendrian submanifold in uh, the boundary of the compact piece. Remember, this arm must have cylindrical boundary, and uh, which is a Legendrian there. So Legendrian means uh, Intersection of the Lagrangian with that boundary. Okay. That's a simple way of saying it. Um, so, what this Lagrangian does is, so in the case of surfaces, it's going to be just a bunch of points. Okay. And what it does is, uh, it's a. Uh, uh, oh, I see, sorry, sorry. So, let's, let me define, sorry, I skipped ahead. So, let me just talk about this first and then I'll talk about this. Okay, so. All right. So omega of m is somewhat similar, but it has, in addition, non-compact objects. Non-compact with okay. And these non-compact non branches, we have to talk about how they behave at infinity. Okay, so they are, uh, uh, we eventually want to do in intersection theory with them. So they are kind of some non-compact branches that go to infinity. Okay. But if you just try to intersect them, uh, you know, using Hamilton ISW, you can make them completely disjoint. So there has to be some kind of prescription. And uh, uh, one way to do it is uh, uh, so the boundary. Remember, um, the the boundary had this uh, restriction. So let's call this that one. This that one. This uh, one form restricts to this y, and it's a contact form. And uh, it associated with contact form, there is a red vector field. Okay, so the red vector field is tangent to the boundary, so it satisfies this, this equation. Uh, okay. And uh, so R is some red vector field here that's tangent to the boundary. And it's given by our choice of data. And when we try to do intersection theory with non-compact Lagrangians, in addition to the in, in addition to their intersections in the compact piece, which we can arrange to be transverse, we also include flow lines from one of them to the other that goes along the vector field. Okay. So this is a, a somewhat so, so the wrap wrap category was defined by uh, Abzeit and Seidel. Uh, using Hamiltonian theory, but this is a, uh, a slightly different, uh, technically slightly different uh, setup, uh, which uses um, SFT. But still, uh, uh, so there is a. Uh, if you want to read about it, it's, uh, there's an exposition of uh, of it in, in my paper with Echo. So that's on archive. But it is not a, That's not a renovation in this paper. It's a, it's a. Uh, has been known for a while. Uh, we just wrote what what should be the definition of wrap category using just red vector fields and homomorphic curves. Okay. So, um, but uh, in addition to so normally, in addition to just intersection points, there is red vector fields, red red cords that go between the branches. 
Okay, and uh, this is a, for in this case of a surface, this is very uh, uh, this makes life very easy. So, for example, this is a cylinder, and this is an object. This L is an object of this uh, 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 non-compact symplectic manifold, and the real vector field in this case is just rotation okay, along the boundary. And uh, uh, you can see these generators, the z, z squared that goes twice. You die go three times. Sorry. Anyway, so this for all of them. And then this, these ones uh, that go the other way are z inverse, z, z minus 2, z minus 2, and so on. Okay, so I mentioned to you that the endomorphism algebra of this L is this Laurent polynomial ring. I'm not proving this yet, but I'm just telling you there are these generators that correspond to this, this models, which are flow lines that start from L and end with L. And there is one intersection point that corresponds to perturbation of L, uh, and that's uh, that's the identity of it. Okay, so so that's kind of a very quick sketch of this graph category, but uh, uh, in essence, it's a, it allows non-compact Lagrangians and uh, Gen the home spaces are modified by, by allowing red chords between the branches. And finally, let me, uh, so I, I have to stop, right? So let me, let me uh, mention what these stops are. So these lambda are called stop. And what they do is, uh, these, are, uh, these are some Legendrians that, that sit at the boundary. And if you have a chord that intersects this Legendrian, you disallow it. So the, the, the flow is stopped by these guys. Okay? So they, you're not allowed to pass through those points. Okay? So this is kind of a, a this is, a, this is a, a category that has essentially the same objects, but uh, the Lagrangians are not allowed to go to the stops, and the flow lines are uh, the flow lines are uh, disallowed if you pass through stop. So. So I will start next lecture by saying that, uh, by explaining this is a full and faithful embedding. This is a localization function. And, and if you have, uh, so this is the proper category, uh, in general, not smooth. And this is a smooth and proper if you have enough stops. Uh, this is smooth, but not proper. Okay, so I'll, I'll define these notions and I, I'll explain what they are. Okay, next. Yeah. Thank you.